Okay, so um, there are two different types of, of eye movements, and we're going to talk about eye movements because uh, most of gaze is eye movements. There are head movements that uh, can occur too, but we're going to uh, restrict ourselves to eye movements. So there are two different types. Eye movements that, are, that serve to maintain gaze and eye movements that serve to switch gaze. All right, what, what maintains gaze? Well, one is fixation. Okay, here is this cat looking at that object in great hopes that it will move so that the cat can go crazy about the moving object. But this fixation is an active process. We will see, and we will see the consequences of that later. Another way that we maintain gaze using eye movements is through the vestibular ocular reflex. And that's, we're gonna spend quite a bit of time on the vestibular ocular reflex. Um, and finally, there is a, uh, there is, I told you that um, one of the ways that the vestibular system can have a uh, motor consequence or a motor deficit is through a nystagmus. And it is true that many forms of nystagmus are pathological. There is one physiological, or at least one physiological form of nystagmus that is normal. And in fact, it's a sign of health. And that is optokinetic nystagmus. And we'll look briefly at that. The other type of eye movement is to change gaze. And the first, and the first one is we can cancel the VOR. So the VOR essentially lets me continue to look over there as I turn my head. But if I decide I want to look from there to there, I can keep my eyes in my head, cancel the VOR, and not have my eyes rotate back as I move my head. So that's a cancellation of the VOR. The, a saccade, we're going to spend quite a bit of time on that, is a saccade is a way that we, we move our fixation. We make a ballistic movement. It is a very fast movement on the order of, say, 350 degrees per second. So it's, it lasts a very short time because obviously you can't, you can't rotate your eyes. Um, so a saccade is a very important type of eye movement. Uh, another type of eye movement that changes gaze is smooth pursuit. And this is, it allows us to, say, follow a bird as it travels across our visual field. Okay, follow anything. If we're watching a, 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 um, a sports contest and we're watching people run up and down um, a field as we go this way and this way, we're using uh, smooth pursuit. Uh, we'll, t we'll touch on that very briefly. And finally, there's vergence, which allows us to change the depth, uh, the, 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 um, the change where we're looking at in, a, in depth. So we can look from a far target to a near target. That involves virgins. And we won't talk more about that. We already talked about that when we talked about uh, cranial nerves and, and also in the vision uh, section. All right. Uh, so what happens if eye, if eye movements are misaligned? What happens if the eyes are misaligned? Well, what happens, as you know, is diplopia. And this is a, a normal person shifting their eyes from 10 degrees to one, on one side to 10 degrees on the other side. Their eyes move together in conjugate. And all the way along here, they, uh, they see one image. So the image is moving together. Here's a person with myasthenia gravis. And as they move, the eyes become misaligned. They're looking at slightly different places off by uh, I can't remember what this is, but very small amounts. You, certainly, if you're off by a degree, that will be noticeable, and this will result in a double vision. All right, so that's what we want to avoid. And this is what this looks like. So I just artificially, this is an image. Uh, this is the in-focus image that I, that I took of a, a lovely anhinga. And if I shift them to the side. You can see that this, in this image there are two beaks. Here there are two beaks. In this image it's shifted back so there's still only one beak but you can see that the pattern of, on the wings is much less clear than it is here. So um, diplopia is going to degrade the visual image that you have. But telling a person is not going to be able to know whether this is blurry vision or diplopia 
again, you have to remember when, when somebody comes in saying, I'm not seeing right, that you have to figure out whether you're looking at an eye movement problem or a vision problem. So in, the, in this section, what we're going to talk mostly about is uh, the VOR and the saccades. But before we get there, we're going to start by looking at what's special about extraocular motor neurons and extraocular muscles.